Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome, my Leo friends and friends of Leo. This is the Divine Phoenix Rising Tarot, and hey, I'm Zachary. Thank you guys for joining me here, and welcome to my table. So, Leo, how have you been? I missed you guys. I know it's been a minute. I'm happy to be back here to distribute the message that came through for you guys at this time. So, looking at meditation first, messages that came through meditation, or a couple oracle cards that came through, and then we'll get into the tarot as we do. Um, so, Leo, a few things came through in your meditation. The first thing that I received was being rubbed the wrong way. Um, and I took it more as, um, or the way that it, it siphoned down basically was pointing to your preference on something. Um, I feel like being rubbed the wrong way in general um, means being uh, being irritated. So there's irritation to something going on right now but this is involving your preference in some way like I, th I think of a cat being literally being rubbed the wrong way it's not your preference to be rubbed this way but you are being rubbed this way um, the next thing that came through was um, ilk which is like your kind your tribe your family um, and I so I'm filming this what does it say the 12th Filming this today on the 12th, I channeled these messages a couple days ago. It was like on the 10th. I do them in kind of chunks. Um, so there was a portion of this message that came through initially. And then as I sat down, I always double check with Spirit to make sure that that's the complete message. If there's something more, um, there was a little bit more that came through and we'll, we'll talk about that. So this all came through um, a couple days ago here. So Ilk being your kind, your family, your tribe, your group, where you belong. The next thing that came through was spill the seed, spill the truth. So I understand <laughs> um, spill the seed, what that can mean. Um, but the way that it came through was actually something about letting go of or um, spilling. Maybe there is an accidental telling of some sort of a family truth or a family secret is something that came through. There could be... Um, Maybe there's a family secret coming forward that you're not aware of, or maybe uh, another member of your ilk has shared a secret of yours or a truth of, of yours. Um, we'll get into this a little bit further. I'm not quite sure exactly what it's talking. It could be different for, for everybody as well. The next thing that came through was below benign. Um, so meditating on that for a minute, what actually came through as far as meaning was less than significant. Something that is less than significant, excuse me. So combining that with um, your family, your ilk, um, and spilling this truth of some sort, I feel like you, you may be more on the receiving end, or if this is you to somebody else as far as sharing a secret, you may be feeling less than significant, or you may have made somebody else feel less than significant because of whatever was shared here. Um, so that was all channeled a couple days ago, like I said, and then today as I was sitting down to make sure there was nothing new, um, there was a little bit more. And what came through was a, a Japanese style sun, like a tattoo, um, where it's got all the rays coming off of it. Um, Leo being the sun, there's definitely a connection there with that. But as I was, that was coming through as well. Um, and you may be able to hear there's there's a few kids outside that are um, uh, yelling and screaming with glee. As that was coming through, um, that started coming through as well. And for the most part, it's been pretty quiet over here. So I did take that as a message as well. Something about this inner child um, coming forward with that son. So I don't know if there if somebody has a tattoo like that. I did get kind of like a father energy um so that's for somebody i don't know who it's for but um just trusting the messages that are coming through okay so moving on into your oracle messages like i said you did get a couple cards here um and i love this i haven't used the starseed oracle here in the general readings for a minute they they usually come out here in the um, extended readings but uh this one did fly right on out you guys got the golden children this is um, inner child, tenderness, innocence, and rare gifts. Well, hey, hey. So this card, 
in the book, it talks about you could be a golden child yourself. Uh, the golden children that are here, um, it's another kind of um, incarnation of similar to like uh, indigo children, rainbow children. The golden children themselves are here without any any sort of karma. There hasn't been any karma that they've accrued being like a first life. It is both a blessing and a curse to have no karma, kind of like having no credit, I guess, <laughs> starting with no credit here in the United States anyway. Um, essentially, they can do whatever they want because of that. And again, like I said, this is a blessing and a curse. Um, if they are not supported in the right way, if they're not raised in a way where they are led and taught how to navigate this life to make the most of that kind of energy or lack of energy, it can definitely go south quickly. Because there are such rare gifts attached to these kinds of children, um, it's a very powerful force. It's very important to, to parent them in the right way. You could also be um, a parent to one of these golden children. Maybe you have the charge here in this life to, um, to raise kids or to protect children more specifically a golden child as well but i get this feeling of uh or this message of the rare gifts the rare gifts is definitely standing out to me in innocence this connection between um i don't really like the word purity but innocence innocence and rare gifts that innocence if it becomes tainted can also affect the way that those gifts are um, are presenting um that was i love that coming out after the sun like I said, you could be, um, it just gave me a very like father kind of energy. Maybe you are, like I said, a parent yourself uh, in one of these situations. But overall, I feel like rare gifts is something that's coming up for you in general, Leo. So the next card that came through is in the Wild Archetypes Oracle deck. And you guys got the temple. The temple here is the sanctuary, the shrine, the altar. So the book asks, um, like this can symbolize your body as well. Um, it could be a physical place, a sanctuary of some sort um, outside of yourself, but it can be within yourself as well. The book asks, what do you spend your time worshiping, essentially? Technology, your phone, TV, books, food, yourself, another. It doesn't um, assume that any of those are wrong answers. This is about getting curious about where you're where you're spending your time. I feel like the reason why this is important right now is a component of um, a spiritual journey that you're on. Always on a spiritual journey, but it feels like something is coming forward. Like maybe there are some um, gifts that you've had locked away that are coming forward now and require a little bit more of your attention as far as worship goes, right? Um, you may also be playing a role in somebody else's life in facilitating the, uh, the blossoming, is what I'm hearing, of, of somebody else's gifts. Teaching them how to worship themselves. Love that. Okay. Thank you, Spirit. Okay, so let's get into your um, tarot messages here. We're going to start with the Wild Unknown Archetype deck. Oh, I didn't even notice that too. Sun there at the bottom. Love it, Spirit. I pre-shuffle these and then... Then do a little bit more shuffling here on camera. Uh, but sun there at the bottom. Love that. Cheeky. Cute little wink. All right. What do we have here for... Oh, okay. Mother of Wands here is wanting to slip right on out. Um, protection. Okay. This Mother of Wands is Queen of, Queen of Wands. This is typically like your confidence, your authenticity. Um, doing things without caring about what that looks like. Doing it because you want to do that. With this card in particular in this deck, I get kind of like a protective feeling. I feel like something is coming up, like I said, gift-wise, and there's a need for either you as the parent to your own inner child to protect, to protect that um, situation coming, coming up, or to protect that in somebody else, okay? So yeah, Spirit, what do we have here for Leo? Leo, Leo, Leo. And huge shout out to my channel members, you guys. Hello. Thank you for your love and support, as always. 
If you're interested in becoming a channel member yourself, there is a link in the description of this video. There's also a join button next to the subscribe button under this video. Sometimes that doesn't show up though, so feel free to check out the description. And I do have personal readings open and available at this time if you're interested. There's a link in the description that will take you to my website. If you want. Okay, four of swords here at the bottom. So this is your hopes and dreams. Um, four of swords is um, a rest, a break, recharging, respite, retreat. It can also be... Um, like a gift is, is something that comes through here. We're talking about rare gifts here as well. Being in your hopes and dreams, I feel like this is something I'm kind of getting um, with the lamb here too, that like the innocence of the lamb. Innocence was something that came through in the golden children along with rare gifts. I feel like this is more talking about you um, Leo, rather than maybe another child in your life, but I'm not ruling that out either. I feel like there's something you've experienced as a child, especially. We tend to, as children, be a little bit closer to the veil, so to speak, and a little bit more um, intrinsically in tune with our own gifts. And as time goes on, things can happen to that. Either um, society tells us that, you know, that's not real or we need to grow up kind of thing, or like uh, in my case, <laughs> when I was a kid, they, um, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and um, so I kind of hid them for quite some time until they came up later. Maybe you're going through, or you're hoping for that to come back yourself. You're hoping to find the space where you feel safe, like the lamb here under all the swords, and can trust that you are safe in order for those to come through. Okay. All right, moving forward here. So this is the Fortuna deck we'll be using for your second deck. Spirit, what do we have for Leo, my Leo friends? And this is a general message, you guys. Please keep that in mind. You are extremely intelligent, so please use your head, heart, and intuition to decipher which messages are for you. I'll leave the rest behind. Um, feel free to check out your rising moon, Venus, any other major placements in your chart for a more complete picture of you, what's going on for you. So Queen of Keys here at the bottom. Uh, this is your fear, aversion, anxiety. So Queen of Keys is Queen of Swords. Um, a need for truth, seeking truth. I, I feel like there is kind of a, maybe you are similar to, to where I was, um, having a little bit of fear of the truth of your own gifts, of your own um, knowledge, information that's coming forward. Maybe somebody has told you over time that you're wrong or you're full of it or you don't know what you're talking about. Gaslit you. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting here is like, there's, there's this fear of your own truth. Okay. Okay. So let's get into your main message, you guys. Mm. So to start, we have eight of cups. Eight of cups is about recognizing that there's something we need to walk away from. Um, or we may be struggling. Maybe we know we need to walk away from something, but we're not doing it. It can feel like something is missing too, being left out or um, that, that's something I'm getting like something is intrinsically wrong on the inside. Maybe, maybe you guys have been through a situation where you were gaslit, like I said, with your own intuition, that sort of thing. I think it happens to all of us, honestly, to varying degrees, but um, especially as children uh, and especially <laughs> depending on when you were a child. Um, it's a bit more open now, I feel like, um, spiritually speaking, as far as paying attention or, or, um, encouraging maybe the intuition that a child has rather than trying to shut it down. I'm getting the energy here of like, what you feel is missing is you, those gifts, your intuition, tapping into that, maybe even receiving messages, period. Maybe you've stopped receiving messages. Maybe you used to dream and you're not dreaming anymore, just as examples of things coming up. I feel like there's something about your experience or maybe even somebody around you, kind of back to like ilk that came through in the meditation, your family or tribe. Um, maybe something has come through. Oh, that's interesting. 
as far as a family truth or family secret, maybe something has come through for you at some point and that truth or secret being recognized by somebody else around you was uh, vehemently shut down inside of you. And because of that, there's something you're feeling like you're missing, your connection to you, yeah. Princess of Candles comes in here next to, to clarify this. This is um, Page of Wands. I do get all the pages are very uh, juvenile energies. They're great at starting things, not the best at finishing through on things. This is getting excited for a journey, essentially. This is my put me in coach card. Having that energy and excitement to pursue something new. Um, I feel like this is what you are feeling like is missing. Back to what I was saying there. It feels like this energy, this excitement, this animation is what is missing. What was taken um, by somebody telling you that you didn't know what you're talking about, what you were intuiting was wrong. I feel like this is more, like I said, when you were a child. So I don't think that you would recognize necessarily as it was happening. It was more this process of just trusting those around you that they, they knew better than you did. Um, yeah. Okay, let's keep going, Leo. So good stuff for you here. Father of Cups comes through. So Father of Cups is um, King of Cups. Being in your good stuff here, I do feel like um, you are getting to this point of coming back to center. This is the notion of devotion to master the motion of your emotion notion, as I say. Um, having a centered emotional experience. So being in your good stuff here, I feel like the pieces, the pieces of you that may have been splintered off, your gifts, your ability to tap into your intuition, is coming back into central focus. And hell yeah, that's a good thing. Um, many messages come through in the form of emotions. And I feel like, especially if this is you, if something's been um, told that it was wrong or wasn't functioning properly about your experience, there are probably emotions that are going on that are fragmented, that are not helping um, anything about your experience. So I feel like with this coming through, this is an indication that um, there's an opportunity to bring this into balance. Yeah. Mm hmm Cool. Um, judgment comes through here, too. Yeah, of course. Yes, this is all about you, Leo. All about you, Leo. So judgment, this is... Um, it's heeding here. Okay, hearing and heeding the call. Um, as I'm talking about intuition, your intuition here. I feel like you guys were coming back to a place where you get to readdress this. You get to hit the spiritual gym again, so to speak. Start working out these muscles that you, maybe you haven't been able to work out for a while, or if you have been working them out, this is an opportunity to um, to upgrade, to take something to another level energetically and gift wise. But this is going inside and um, and deciding what components of yourself and your experience you want to stay there, to continue to be a part of you and your experience, or that you want to go. It's moving from a life of rot to the life that you want. Love that. Love that. Love that. One sec. I need some water. Hmm. Pardon, maybe you need some water. Maybe you're a bit parched too. It is so flipping hot up here. <laughs> and I shut my AC off to do these videos, so you know I love you. <laughs> you know I love you, Leo. It's just too noisy to have going. Anywho, so what you don't see uh, coming, what's in the dark, what's not known in your situation right now, Five of Cups. Um... Despair is something that is actually coming through on this right now. It's disappointment, regret. It's this focus on something that was taken away, kind of back to the Eight of Cups here. Um, I feel like I've said it a million times up, up until now. Whatever happened here that, that impacted your confidence towards your own abilities, that is what this Five of Cups is referring to. And because of... Um, how it happened or how it felt 
it's difficult, and this could be what needs to be turned away from here too with the Eight of Cups, is the Five of Cups. It's difficult to turn away from what is causing you disappointment or what has caused you disappointment or regret. Maybe this could be, you know, for some of you, maybe you played this role in somebody else's life. Maybe this is a caution, like I said, if you are a parent as well to one of these golden children to, um, to encourage their spiritual growth rather than um, uh, discourage really anything. Um, I feel like as an example, what comes to mind is it's, it's pretty standard for most people or, or typical for most people, especially if a child is afraid of something like um, at night, they may see something in the dark. It's kind of a natural reaction to just say, no, that wasn't there. No, that's not there because, and, and you may even have the best of intentions. You're, you're trying to help the child, or maybe this was done to you. You're trying to persuade them that something's not there so that they're not afraid. Um, but the reality is maybe they are seeing something, you know what I mean? Maybe you did see something. Um, so being cautious about the way that you're approaching children, your own child too, this energy is still going to come up inside of you. Um, if you went through this yourself as a child, so reparenting that child, learning to listen to that child and what they're saying, what they're afraid of, instead of telling them the boogeyman isn't real, tell them how to deal with the boogeyman. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what I feel like that this is what's in the dark is learning how to deal with that boogeyman. Yish. Um, so nine of candles comes through here next. Nine of wands. This is the wounded warrior. It's about resiliency. So connecting that to your inner child again, I feel like they, um, I mean, they're one of the most resilient components to ourselves, right? Especially the older that we get, that is one of the older components of ourself, always. This is an encouragement um, to continue to try new things until you find success at something. It in the line in line, excuse me, in line with uh, the gifts or with your inner child or your inner intuition, that sort of thing. Uh, if you're finding your inner child is coming up with these messages of like I'm seeing the boogeyman, there's this fear approaching it in different ways like i said instead of going uh no that's not there maybe um have them explain to you what it is they're experiencing teach them about protection nine of wands or excuse me nine of candles here is about um protecting what it is you're building too because it's worth it so instead of interesting instead of uh maybe passing along that generational trauma too maybe that's the family truth of um you're wrong you don't know what you're talking about your child shut up go to bed <laughs> um turn to the other two cups instead of focusing on those three cups that disappointment and pain you experienced as a child yourself and continuing to pass that along um turn to the cups that are full the hope try something different in approaching this situation whether that's your inner child a child you have or a child that's in your life i don't personally have any children of my own but um, there are many conversations I've had with children about things that they see. And uh, I don't ever shut them down because, uh, well, shit, I saw a lot of things <laughs> when I was a kid um, and still do. So there is a lot of stuff out there that is real. <laughs> and even if it's not real to you, it's real to the user's experience. And I feel like that's the important part of this message here um or one of the important parts of this message is um respecting like that reality outside of maybe your own worship that worship is coming back through here uh and tenderness in the golden children what do you worship do you worship this ideal that children should be this way or reality is this way are you open to the possibility that maybe there's more? Hmm? Tenderness, though, always important, okay, and compassion. So the um, trial for yourself, your guys right now, your difficulty, your obstacle, you guys have Mother of Swords come through here first. This is, uh, didn't you have, yeah, Queen of Keys. Uh, Queen of Swords, Mother of Swords is Queen of Swords. So honesty, again, 
Well, back to this family truth. What is this family truth? I feel like, especially with the uh, imagery of the owl on here, I feel like this is like a like generational wisdom, the sim symbolism of the owl being wise. Um, maybe it's a generational or familial experience to shut out, uh, like, I don't know, ghosts aren't real or uh, aliens aren't real. And I'm not saying, you know, anything is real or isn't. I'm talking about the practice of opening up to what it is like challenging your own beliefs on something. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whether or not you change your mind is less relevant. What is important is this practice of allowing yourself to think outside of your own box. But this is difficult right now because this is deeply ingrained. Mm -hmm. So four of coins comes through here. Um, next, Four of Pentacles. This is how you feel secure. This deals with your security. I feel like um, it can be scary. Well, it can be scary to think outside of our own box. Those rules and parameters that we were programmed with, that we taught ourselves, we learned ourselves, every component of that, that make up the framework like the boundaries of our experience or our reality. I feel like you guys are, uh, I'm seeing that sun again, that sun tattoo. Like the sun is rising here, which is, which is a grand illumination. There's illumination that's happening. So there's truths that are coming up that maybe you're not quite ready to see, or maybe, maybe it will shake the foundations of how you feel secure. The challenge here is feel insecure, not permanently, but allow yourself to be uncomfortable enough to explore something outside of what it is that you believe. Many of us are, um, or many people, is definitely a, a practice of the ego, get stuck. Like, you know, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That is the ego. You can absolutely te teach an old dog new tricks. Um, just make sure that you give yourself a treat. I feel like that's kind of what we're talking about here. Allowing yourself, mm, allowing yourself to open up to this process of learning something new. Like I said, you don't have to change your mind on something or maybe you, you will, but you don't have to. It's this practice of allowing something to be different that is also allowing these gifts to come forward too. Because I feel like these gifts are um, these clear abilities, um, psychic gifts, um, they are outside of this framework of where you feel secure or where somebody told you is safe. Okay. I challenge you. So let's go ahead and pull an animal spirit card for you as well. This is the wild unknown animal spirit Oracle. What do we have for Leo? And then we'll move into the extended portion of this reading. What do we have going on for Leo here? Please spirit. No. Mm. <laughs> so rabbit and unicorn here at the bottom. So we're talking about the third eye. That's the third eye chakra. Um, actually, I love that. The third eye is being illuminated here as well in that hope with the lamb to be able to express those gifts, the sight, the spiritual sight. Um, the unicorn card, you know, the book talks about um, kind of exactly what we're talking about here. I love that these uh questions that we ask you could relate it to god forces outside of ourselves and creator um does god exist does god not exist i think i felt god once maybe i didn't feel god i don't know what that was maybe it was indigestion right um this process exactly what i'm talking about of challenging yourself to think outside of what it is that you think pushing yourself outside of a comfort zone you don't have to change what it is that you think but that practice of working to um, try to think something differently, to examine it, to see if it is something that you know as personal truth, that's the important part. That's what allows these gifts to come forward. So rabbit is what, come, was, is what came out here, Leo. 
Rabbit is about um, uh, watching how we speak. So kind of back to whether this is with children that you have in this life, your inner child, other children in your life. The rabbit is um, afraid of the eagle eating them. And in telling their friends about it constantly, I'm afraid of the eagle eating me, the eagle hears and comes down and eats the rabbit because he thinks it's a great idea. So this is encouragement to watch how you're speaking because your words do have power. Are you speaking words that were given to you as a child that really don't have meaning to you? You're just continuing to use them on autopilot? I feel like that's what kind of this whole message is about, stepping outside of autopilot, okay? Get back to the, the helm or the wheel or the flight deck, the driver's seat, okay? All right, Leo, I hope this was helpful. I love you guys. Thank you for joining me here. Um, I am going to go into the extended, like I said, links are in the description. Private readings are open if you want to check that out. Um, in the extended, we're going to go into direct messages from your higher self, love and advice, career and advice, and what is most likely being manifested for you based on your thoughts and emotions. Um, please like, share, comment, subscribe if this reading resonated with you. I do appreciate the support. And I have my Cash App and PayPal links in the description if you feel called to tip or donate. I will gladly accept those. It goes a long way, and I truly appreciate support in that way as well, you guys. Love you, Leo. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you soon, okay? Be well.